Hello everyone, welcome to Talent Origin. In this video lecture, we'll learn about Spark distributed shared variables. In addition to RDD, another kind of low level API in Spark is two types of distributed shared variables. One is broadcast variables, another one is accumulators. In this video lecture, we'll learn about broadcast variables. Broadcast variable lets programmer save a large data set on all worker nodes and reuse it across many actions without resending it to the cluster. Broadcast variables are a way programmer can share an immutable value efficiently around the cluster without encapsulating the variable in function closure. When a variable is used in a function closure, it will be serialized and deserialized on all the worker nodes many times uh, to be precise one per task for every task each variable will be serialized and transported over a network moreover if the same variable is used in multiple spark actions every time the variable will be resent to all the worker nodes this is where a broadcast variable uh, will come into picture broadcast variables are shared immutable variables that are cached on every machine in the closure instead of serialized with every single task park distributes a broadcast variable using efficient broadcast uh, algorithm broadcasting algorithms so the communication costs over the network are uh, negligible so let's start writing the code and see how uh, we can implement broadcast variables in spark Now, for using this broadcast variables, I'll be using a data set. Uh, this data set is there in uh, a talent origin uh, GitHub repository. Under data sets, you have something called songs data set. So in this songs data set, we'll be using, uh, this songs data set we'll be using for demonstrating our broadcast variables. So for this, uh, let me clone this repository into my uh, Spark cluster. Uh, which is a GCP cluster. I'll clone this, get clone the datasets uh, repository. In this repository, uh, there is something called songs dataset. So let me just give the quick. Uh, problem statement over here. Here I have uh, three different, uh, uh, four, dif five different files. In these files, we have, uh, we'll be using songs txt, which have a song uh, name and a, a song ID. And we have something called users.txt. Uh, which has the user uh, user unique unique identification number and uh, I have something called uh, this one had uh, user song play counts right uh, this has this user ID and uh, song ID and a uh, play count how many times that particular song has been played by a particular user this is my uh, the, the, these are the three different files which I have uh, in hand suppose if I'm writing a machine learning algorithm which uses these data sets and tries to predict a song to the user so uh, for anything uh, for a machine learning algorithm uh, to run it uh, it runs on a uh, numeric uh, data types numeric content so the song ID and the user ID, which are there in these uh, files are uh, alphanumeric characters, but our machine learning algorithm will work with only numeric characters. So for this case, what we'll do, uh, we'll assign a user a, a unique ID uh, to uh, each and every song and the each and every user. Uh, for songs, we already have a song and a song ID. For users, we'll create a unique ID uh, along with this. Now what we have to do, uh, all the all the user IDs and the uh, song IDs which are there in this uh, play count uh, file will be replacing with the numeric values which we'll be assigning right now. So this is our uh, use case or problem statement. So for this, what we'll do, uh, I'll let me quickly uh, initialize the Spark session. Uh, 
all the arguments which I want to read or all the files which I want to read uh, in my code, I'll be passing it from my command line arguments. So first I'll pass users, uh, users and uh, what I'll do, I'll read a text file. So we have a text file over here. So this text file, I'll read it spark dot. Uh, for reading a text file, you can use text file method, which is there in the Spark context. So this would be args of zero, right? Uh, similarly, I would like to read uh, So I'm uh, reading my uh, files. In these uh, files, the users, first I'll be reading users, right? The users uh, file doesn't have any unique ID. So for that, what I'll do, I'll create a unique ID uh, for every user uh, within the file and I'll convert that uh, uh, thing into a map. So what I'll do, I'll use uh, users map and I'll convert uh, users dot map. No, first I'll do zip with index. So what it does, uh, it uh, will zip the content of uh, the row with index. So the first uh, uh, the output of this particular uh, function would be uh, user ID followed by index, which is zero. This user ID followed by index, which is one, something like that. It will be uh, creating. So next what I'll do, I'll do map and I'll take each user. And uh, we are getting a tuple from zip with index, right? So with from this tuple, I'll do the first element and the second element. I'm just extracting it. So once I get this output, I'll collect this output as map. Now, similarly, I'll do songs map. For songs, it already has a unique ID assigned. So I don't have to assign a unique ID. So simply I can read the file and uh, split the file into two uh, elements. One is a song ID, another one is uh, a song uh, number, right? Uh, so for, I'll do songs dot map song implies song dot split with space once i have this i'll map it i'll get an array once i split it i'll get an array and now i'll take this array i'll do another map uh, song array what i'll do song array of first element is my uh, song ID and the second element will be my song unique number and now this also I'll do collect as map so I have user map and song map now similarly I'll, I'll collect uh, what user plays uh, play count user song play count is there right this also I'll try to collect in uh, as a map this file is delimited, delimited with uh, tab. So I'll do user song count map. I'll take user song play count dot uh, map. So and uh, I'll take the element and I'll split it dot split with backslash T and it is an I'll take this as an array. I don't want to collect this as a map. I'll just take it as an array. Now, uh, so whatever uh, a split function does, it returns a array of uh, elements. So RDD of array of elements is array of a string is there. Now I have these three things. Now, uh, as an uh, if I want to uh, replace all the elements, right? So what I can do, I can directly uh, write something like this uh, case of uh, uid sid and count and uh, directly i can uh, use something like suppose val user i want to replace uh, the element right so re replace content of whatever S uid is there that uid i have to replace with with the unique number which i have in the map so what uh, what i have to do user implies uh, i have a user's map user map dot get or else uh, what this particular UID I want to this is the key so this key I'll search in my uh, users uh, file users map and corresponding uh, 
a value i'll be fetching back so corresponding value uh, whatever is there it will get back so if that particular user id is not there i'll just return zero similarly i'll do this for song as well songs map get our id sid right so this way i can achieve it uh, what i can do here uh, i i can return a tuple with a uh, user comma song comma count right now what happens uh, this particular uh, map whatever is there this map and this map these two maps will be sent across uh, uh, the network and uh, it will be serialized and deserialized and, uh, on all the worker nodes and now every time you uh, uh, do certain actions if, if the same uh, map function is used in multiple function or multiple actions this will be sent across the network every time so this is what we, we were uh, trying to uh, avoid right so directly we can use these two uh, map files within our uh, closure function which is map right instead of doing that what i'll do um, i will assign or i will create a broadcast variable users broadcast here what how i can create a broadcast variable is like spark spark context and i can use broadcast and can pass whatever uh, variable i have to broadcast so this is how you can broadcast a variable it's something like in spark session you have a method called broadcast to which you can pass any variable which you want to broadcast so i want to broadcast both songs and users right now i have broadcasted the variable so this is how we create a broadcast variable so what happens when the broadcast variable uh, uh, is created the broad the spark intelligently sends this broadcast variable or this variable contents over the network and stores it in all the worker nodes so once the variable is available in all worker nodes we can straight away use it in, uh, and there is no need uh, for spark to transport these variables on every task that's what we were referring to right so how to use this broadcast variable within our function uh, instead of using users map i can use users broadcast and to get the value of this uh, uh, this is a broadcast variable and to get the value of what is present in the broadcast variable i can do something called dot value it will return me the value the value of this is the map whatever we have passed over here right so this will return the value from this value what i want to get get or else i want to get an element uh, uid if that uid is not there i have to return a default value which is zero similarly i can do it for songs broadcast and value and get or else i am getting the value from the broadcast variable and i am uh, doing my operations normally using this approach you can pass a huge lookup table or a lookup file over the network and it can be used very efficiently which will which will increase your uh, spark job or spark applications performance drastically right uh, so in this way you, you you spark doesn't have to send uh, these two variables every time uh, a function or a closure is there and it will transport only once suppose in future if i want to use these two um, these two functions in another uh, uh, closure a uh, spark doesn't need to send this uh, 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 send these variables again i have this in a broadcast variable which is already present in the worker node and i can use it straight away so which will reduce my uh, network costs and it will improve the performance of your spark applications so i'll uh, use modified counts and uh, let's just print the contents of this modi Right counts and take 50 and uh, for each print ln right this is how uh, you create a broadcast variable and this is how you use a broadcast variable now let's uh, build a jar okay in my compilation it is throwing an error uh, because here i am getting an array right uh, because 
whatever this user song count I have it over here this is an array so I can not use directly as this I have to use something like array of and have to pass this uh, to cast this element if I'm passing a tuple then I don't have to mention this array but I'm passing an uh, array object so I have to mention this uh, array object and uh, run it now our uh, build is complete and the package is created let me uh, copy it to a cluster this is my location and I'll upload it so upload uploading is done now you can see it will be uploading in my home directory right just now it has been uploaded now uh, I have to place all these uh, files or my data sets into my HDFS location. So for that what I will do HDFS, DFS. Now to uh, use the spark job I can use spark submit master I haven't mentioned in my job. So I have to mention in my command line which is uh, yarn hyphen client is like this I can give or I can give master yarn and uh, deploy mode as sorry deploy mode as client and the class is in my jar file my class is uh, there in this package dot and the jar file is gcp jar file and i have to pass three variables right the first one is user second is songs and third is play count so these three are the files i am be passing so let me run it And now you can see all the user IDs and uh, song IDs which are there in this file have been modified with the uh, numeric values instead of uh, uh, alphanumeric characters. Now this uh, thing I can convert into my uh, rating object or anything and I can pass into my MLlib algorithms. right? Uh, so this is just one uh, use case or one problem statement where we can use a broadcast variable. I hope it was helpful to you guys and you are able to understand uh, uh, how to use the broadcast variable and uh, uh, how to create a broadcast variable and how to use the broadcast variable within your application. If you like this video, please do give a thumbs up and uh, share this video. And if you are new to this channel, uh, please do subscribe to the channel and spread the channel. Thanks guys and uh, see you in the next video lecture. Bye.